This is a rant video. If you're easily offended, can't take a joke, or have a low-key body pillow, feel free to click off the video right now. I'm sure you'll find something more suitable in the kids section of YouTube, where it's every day, bro. Today we're ranting about Mercury. Mercury has always been an annoying god to me, but holy damn has he gotten annoying on an exponential scale in the last few patches. It all started with the doomed patch 5.17 being the release of Golden Blade. Now Golden Blade got this long story of why it was brought back in this form, the time has come for a legendary item in Smite's history to return, but in adjusted state, blah 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 blah, nobody cares. It was released because somebody on the dev team wanted to see Mercury at Worlds, I bet. And when it was released again, they didn't even bother to look into the interaction with Mercury, which made it broken on him in the first place, but instead actually gave it a better mix of stats and also only gave it to assassins and warriors, so that Mercury would benefit even more because he has less opponents that he has to struggle with. And why do you say better stats? Because it's a little bit cheaper, it has a little bit more movement speed, which Mercury benefits from. It also has some attack speed mixed with physical power, so Mercury doesn't have to bother looking into other attack speed items at any later point at all. He didn't really have to before, because he has his two, but you know, even less now that he gets some extra attack speed, so everything else in his AA chain goes off quicker, so you know, that's great already. And then the passive just multi-procs on his one, so you get three targets, you hit them once with your ability, and then each of them gets a multi-proc from Golden Blade as well because that's for some reason a logical interaction that nobody ever thought of adjusting. AoE Cleaves and Golden Blade are super weird, I've talked about this already, I don't need to do this again, but that's just the beginning. So with Medu look, Mercury has instant clear on small camps, often he clears the big minion in the camp as well, and if he doesn't clear them immediately, then it needs like one, two, three more hits, and that's it. Your hits are also faster with more attack speed, have I mentioned? So really, Mercury has no problems at all clearing the jungle at any point of the game. He also has a very good trading potential, especially if the enemy happens to step into their minions. They get all these multi-procs and they take a lot of damage. Ironically, Mercury wasn't even bad before Golden Blade got introduced in its new form, so it's not like it needed much of a boost he was already being played. But why even complain about all of this, when Mercury has been adjusted? It's no problem, guys. We know about the issue. Here at Hyrus, we've already fixed the Golden Blade problem for you. And we've given you a long explanation as to how aware we are of this and what we've done. Golden Blade has taken Mercury from a strong pick to a chop pick. He is one of the strongest guards in the game at all levels of play. Even though Golden Blade is enabling his power, we want to be careful adjusting that item. By the way, we really don't have any bias for Golden Blade. And for Mercury. At all. Many off-meta struggling guards are using Golden Blade to reach new levels of success, and that could totally not be adjusted in a way where it's only affecting abilities that happen to be basic attacks as well. No, no, no. We have to look at all guards here, not just this one interaction which could easily be changed. Just making that clear, you know? The item passive was recently brought back with a positive reception. I'm not gonna lie, that's actually true. Mostly by Mercury mains who just love playing Mercury all the time, all day. We don't want to hurt all those other applications just because the one guard overperforms with the item. We will be looking at the interactions of Golden Blade and Mage Look in the future, because we totally couldn't just, you know, take the hit away from the main target and leave it on the off targets like an actual basic attack works as well. No, it has to be this proc where double procs on everyone, and that can definitely not be changed. We have to do that in the future after Worlds. But for now, we will be increasing the cooldown of Mercury's primary damaging ability. His clear will still be strong, but he will need to pace himself more carefully with his ability. Two seconds on a big damaging ability can make a big difference and should bring Mercury down a notch without limiting the guard pool in other places. Well that sure sounds fantastic, I'm sure they've made great adjustments to the one side of the cooldown thing to make it work properly, to make it not unfair, maybe reduce the base damage a little bit as long as Golden Blade is so prevalent and doesn't want to be touched in terms of its interactions, right? You know, we, we do something with that, we can, we can work with that, we can maybe lower the radius a little bit or something, you know, just not the off procs outside of the circle with Golden Blade, anything like that, you know? Uh, wait, okay, they just changed the cooldown from 8 seconds to 10 seconds. Uh, because you're totally not just clearing every second camp with your two anyways, you know, just use your one on the first camp, use your two on the second one, because with Golden Blade you cleared in the same time and then, you know, use your one on the next one again. That's, that's all? Well, okay, yeah, no, cool, no problem. No, 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 we, we're happy with that, right? We take that, small steps. Small steps before Worlds, you know, we don't want to change the meta, we don't want to, you know, have the pros suffer from not being able to play Mercury every single game or ban him every single game, you know? It's just gonna be so rough, you know. The next few months, it's gonna suck for everyone else who doesn't like playing Mercury and playing against him, but 
hey, you know, better, better have Mercury at Worlds. But hey, it's not like Mercury is a super strong guard and easy to play outside of Golden Blade, right? It's not like he has two of the strongest hard CCs in the game, as well as strong AA damage with an AA steroid and crit synergy in his abilities even and high mobility at the same time. I mean, that would be ridiculous. That would be taking a guard like Naja and also giving him good escape potential on top of all of the things that he has. Or it would be like taking a guard like Bakasura and giving him multiple forms of strong CC or a guard like Kali and suddenly also giving him multiple forms of strong CC and making her abilities crit as well. I mean, that would be crazy, right? No one would ever do that unless, you know, that's just exactly what Mercury is. A knock-up, a disorient, a grab, an attack speed, a steroid, a crit synergistic ranged ability with AoE and two mobility abilities in one guard. Isn't that lovely? Let's look at this in more detail. He's got two passives, one that gives you more damage for traveling some units, 500 units for 50% extra damage on your next basic attack. 500 units, by the way, it's might, it's not very much. You get 25% of your movement speed translated into physical power as well, when it comes from items or from abilities. And this goes for your teammate stuff as well. And then, you know, your first ability is just an AoE poke and clear on a 10 second cooldown, which, you know, happens to be able to crit and also proc golden bow at the same time, which is fine. I mean, looking at the kit with a 10 second cooldown instead of 8 seconds, it's almost a reasonable ability. The second ability, a 70% attack speed steroid. Naja gets 55% and again, he doesn't have the same mobility. That's cool. And also 10% extra movement speed. And also a slow immunity. And also that whole stuff for 5 seconds and the 10% movement speed permanently. And also, you know, the 10% movement speed actually work together with his passive and also give you an additional 11.25 power on top of your normal power. So this passive and the two together actually give you extra power as well. You know, it's, that's cool, that's cool, it's fine, yeah, no problem. And then we have his three, which is a dash, a grab, and a knockup with a directional choice for the knockup at the same time. Totally something that every god has, like directional CC where you can choose the direction, and then one of the strongest CCs in the game at the same time. It also has, by the way, an 80% scaling, which is definitely not bad, so that's a lot of ability damage as well. It's also amplified against minions for regular clear, you know, just in case you want to take him into solo or into ADC or something. You know, we don't want to have you have a harder time than, than anyone else as an assassin in unconventional roles. Better make sure that you can full clear wave between using your three and using your one with golden blade. And ironically, this is actually his worst ability at the same time. And then you have the ultimate. You can gank across the whole map without even understanding how to gank. You can just go behind your allies tier 1 tower and just dash like straight into lane and CC someone and probably set up a kill that way. That's that's cool, yeah? You also have a 500 base damage and 100% scaling on this ability. And this doesn't scale up in the distance. It's like, you know, you would think, you know, the further he goes, the more he charges up, the more damage it is. No, this is just the same damage all around. And this damage is something you can apply to multiple opponents in a fight very, very easily. It has a disorient for 1.5 seconds, so it's basically a tank level hard CC. You know something similar? Thor, and Thor's kit is severely lower overall in compensation for that. And the distance traveled also counts towards this passive, so you know, after you dealt 500 base damage and 100% scaling, you also deal extra damage with your next basic attack for the distance traveled. Not to mention on top of being a great engage tool, it's also an excellent escape which can hardly be stopped by almost anything because, you know, you CC immunity dash through the enemies, so unless they CC you beforehand, bye. And the funny thing is with how strong Berkshire's basic attacks are and how good his interaction with items is, you can miss all of this stuff and still be a super strong guard. You know, not only AA guards have a very hard power curve, starting very weak and becoming very strong throughout the game like Bakasura, like Kali. Mercury doesn't have that, he performs well at any point. Okay, maybe not the greatest before he gets Golden Blade, but after that, just go for it, you know, you can do whatever you want, because you're good all around. You know what the best counter to Mercury is? Walls, like Thor, like Ymir, and like Odin. And which gods are hardly played these days? Oh, Thor and Ymir? Oh, okay, well, Odin is banned all the time, so maybe that's something impactful that we'll never see. Mercury's way too rewarding hybrid crit basic attack and ability kit was already frustrating enough in the past. With Golden Blade it's got significantly more frustrating. But even Golden Blade gets swapped out late game. And you want to see what kind of crazy stuff the pros get away with on him? Bills like Frostbound Hammer and Hide of the Urchin as his core items along with Haste and Katana for example for Frostalis or like 
randomly adding in a poison star to reduce the enemy damage and then stone cutting sword. You literally here have adapting, building stone cutting sword, height of the urchin, poison star into deathbringer titan's bane. Which other god can afford to just go for half bruiser items and not even go for flat penetration, just the reduction through basic attacks because he doesn't need anything else and at the same time have such a messy combination of tankiness and still put out damage or you know you can just ditch your percentage pen altogether because who needs that and just go for Frostbone Hammer in the same build or do what Twig did and just build Magi's Blessing or Magi's Cloak and Hide of the Urchin and Frostbone Hammer. It doesn't matter. It is absolutely relevant what you're building. You can go for a full crit lifesteal build, you can go for a just crit, you can go for weird tanky items, you can go for Talaria or you can go for Waritabe. Everything works on him. And normally I would say item flexibility is a great thing, but it's not so great when it's just possible because everything works way too well with him because the god is too strong. And I almost forgot to mention, he has one of the highest win percentages in Diamond Plus Ranked Conquest, as well as being the highest climber when it comes to advance. And that's just a reflection of the Diamond level, he stomps even more on lower levels and also stomps very well in competitive. Rand over, I had to get this off my chest before Merc is not getting nerfed for the next three patches anyways. Before I go though, I'd quickly like to mention that I'm bringing back codes at the end of the description, so feel free to check there. If you're quick, you might get a skin that way. In order to do that, I recommend turning on notifications so you have a chance. Other than that, thank you guys for watching, I hope this was entertaining. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the sub button, it really helps me out. See you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.